Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, hailstorm, volcano, Antarctic surprise, a strange binary, and the first major release from China's earthquake satellite. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were calm, quiet, southern dark coronal hole, failed bright active regions on the north, no sunspots, and therefore no solar flares here on the flat X-ray flux. Let's go to the solar wind. The cosmic ray signatures in the low and anemic solar wind stream hit most of the day after we spoke in the morning. Geomagnetic silence wasn't helping much either. The southern coronal hole has been ready to set an earthquake watch for us, but we had to wait for a good magnetic connection. Finally, two days late, top right and blue phi angle flipped directly to the earth from the sun. Lithospheric activity waited not a moment longer, with Indonesia watching a column of smoke rising into the cloud layers, and Earth has also taken its first six-pointer in a number of days, this one a blot echo striking the low-velocity zone of the mantle. Let's go to South Africa, where Sun City could have used more sun and less hail. It wasn't huge hail, but it was enduring, and piled up to drive flash floods at one of their nicest resorts there. Looking ahead in weather where there is no higher meteorological alert than for this system about to hit the Indian subcontinent as it continues to strengthen on approach. Remember, the season has started a bit lackluster in the Indian Ocean, but every year when it ramps up, it can spawn a number of powerful systems in just a week. Let's go to Antarctica where the official ice gain and loss data has been compiled into animation. This is one of the key items we come back to over and over again. The red zones are the exact locations where the subsurface volcanoes are melting the ice from below and everywhere else has been gaining ice mass over time. Animation is linked in the box below the video. Up next, we're taking a look at the 1909 geomagnetic storm that caused considerable telegraph disruptions. Well, they're now estimating the storm strength to be about the same as the 1989 storm that took out power to the province of Quebec, looking like these types of events happen every decade or two. So hopefully we remember the Seismo Electromagnetic Satellite. China and Italy's Electroquake machine was launched in February, and one of the team members peer-reviewed our 2015 discovery of the Sun and Earthquake relationship, the one with Dr. Uyen from NASA and Dr. Holloman from Ohio State. There are a couple of devices that will aim to eventually try to track our science as well, but for now, here is their first science release. Four magnitude 7 events studied, all showing considerable electromagnetic signals before the crack. Congratulations to this team, and may the science be with you. Lastly here, we've got a bit of a goofy binary system. Now this is how we often see them, right? Massive star cannibalized by a tiny yet actually more massive compact star in the middle. Well, what we have now is some weird flip-flop of that mixed with ALMA's proto-discs. They say their new discovery is not a mature system, but a nascent one with an enormous star beginning its life, and with a disk so massive it's not producing planets, it's producing a binary star. So it's the stellar version of dusty disk planet production. We greatly appreciate your support, whether it's children's books, my layman's textbook, which will be in some classes in the spring, or tickets to Observing the Frontier 2019, all at otf.cells.com, and again, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.